Hey, welcome. Uh, we're doing another song breakdown today. We're breaking down the trio song, uh, Bob's Furniture. If you haven't checked out the record, it'll be linked below. I, I encourage you to listen to it for context, but we'll do some listening and stuff like that as well. Uh, I know this video is a little late too, by the way. I've been trying to upload on Mondays, but there's been some hiccups. I've been streaming more and then like doing this less slash less accurate the Monday timing. I, balance is hard, okay? I'm trying, but thank you for being here. And uh, yeah, let's break, let's break down this song. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and, and hang out. It's going to be a good one. Good morning. Uh, extended coffee sip there. This is the earliest I think we've ever done a video. And I say earliest because it's 7.30, which is, first off, extremely early for me. But I know we've recorded at 7.30 a.m. before, but that's usually at the end of a night. This is at the beginning of my day, which hence severe, severe morning face. Let's just get it out the way. I'm slowly starting to wake up. It's not as bad as it was, like, the first take of this video. But, you know, it's not peak, all right? I know that. It's okay. We're in this together. Um, also, in the last videos, where we'll have Holly on the mic stand and the tree in the background. Um, sad to see the holidays go, but hope you all had a good one and Happy New Year, everybody. Hope this one's not uh, not such a giant shit show. Um, and then the last thing, this brown bag here, just because I feel like I have to explain this giant brown bag in the back of the scene. Um, there's avocado sitting in there. I heard that's a way to make them riper. So, just that's there. So be okay with it. I hope. I hope you are. Um, all right. Breaking down Bob's furniture. Um, the last video got a little bit more involved. I'm going to try to do this one kind of for everybody. So instead of having the prereqs thing, as much as you know, as much as you're going to get from it, um, I'm going to try to keep it a little bit more applicable to everybody. The last one, like I said, got a little bit more advanced uh, pretty quick. It escalated very fast to make a meme like the kids on TikTok these days. I'm so sorry. It's the morning. All right. I don't know what I'm doing here. Okay, let's <laughs> let's play it. Um, I'm gonna follow along on here. I think that's zoomed enough, right? I hope we can all see that uh, while we play the recording, so we can just kind of see what's happening. And then it repeats. So that's our first chunk. Now um, we're in 4-4, four, four, right? Which means each one of these squares, right? Each measure gets four beats. So if I were to count it as it as it happens, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, right? Um, I, I tried to rush. I hope there's not too much latency. There's a little bit of some audio stuff that was happening in the earlier trial of this, but um, just in four, nothing really crazy metric wise. Um, this first chunk gets repeated. So that whole thing that we just listened to gets repeated twice. Um, I wrote A, B, but I I don't know. It's so short that, I mean, you can obviously have an A bar A section and an A bar B section. It just, it feels to me kind of like one chunk. And I say that mainly because the whole time in the song, I was sitting on this like, I don't want to say Easter egg, but this end part, um, which was like the more epic like yeah we're doing a thing which is actually where it feels kind of like a we're going somewhere um but let's uh let's hop into some of the chord stuff get a little bit nerdy with some theory things and then uh, we'll talk about max's solo and my solo at the end and the rest of the form stuff just looking at the first eight bars right our a section which is let me highlight it all yeah here we go um there was a lot of kind of a copy paste stuff used. And I don't think that's a bad thing for the longest time. I always thought like repeating was bad and copy paste was bad, especially because like literally I just hit control C and then control V. <laughs> if you copy and paste by hand, you feel like you've earned it a little bit more. But um, so I, I was, I was a little bit hesitant, but it, it establishes a melody by repetition. Um, and then there's slight variance. So if we look at, measure one three five and seven right so one three five seven they're all the same it's this line right which is just going from seven in the melody over that e major seven so our 
Major seven, nine, seven, thirteen, five, three, right? And then uh, after that is something slightly different. So if we look at measure two, measure four, measure six, and measure eight, those vary just a little bit. So I wanna talk about the difference between an A major nine, like we have in measure two, and an A major six, nine in measure four. So another thing that I've been um, working on as well as like being okay with repetition and not feeling like guilty as a music school kid about doing that is appreciating the small differences in chords. So if I play an A major nine, I'm gonna play one, three, five, seven, and nine, right? I mean, this is obviously just root position, but I'm gonna include the major seven is the big thing. Um, I'm, I'm very specific about the way I write chords. If you've watched the naming chords, you know that since all of my stuff is lead sheets, which pause for a second before we talk about the chords, lead sheets, because I forgot to mention in the beginning. This is just a melody line in chords. So I'm making up my drum part. The bassist is playing like the roots of all these chords. So E, A, E, A, and a little bit of filling in. And then the pianist is playing the melody, some chord voicings and a little bit of filling in as well. So it's like pretty loosely structured, but we're all using, this is like all of the music. It's just that melody and the chords. And then we do the rest. There's a lead sheet for you. Okay, so um, if I play an A69, since I'm using a lead sheet, right, and I'm not writing out every single note ever, otherwise I'd be like, play these notes in this order in this voicing. If you're writing for an orchestra or something, you write out a chord, you're not giving them like A major nine. You're saying like, hey, tuba's gonna play A, we're gonna have flutes play E, and then like clarinets and sax is gonna play G sharp, whatever, you know, you voice it all your, all your ways. Um, this case, um, you have to give as much information with just a chord name as possible. So A major nine, playing all the notes. A six nine, I'm gonna play one, three, five, and then six, and then nine. So instead of playing that major seven, and the nine on top, right, that G sharp, I'm bringing this note down to F sharp. And to me, it's a little bit less tense, because if you take a major seven chord, right, there's a major seven in it. It kind of has this like, contemplative-y thing, I think 6-9 is a little bit more settled, even if you just do that. It just feels a little bit more rested because there's less dissonance in that chord. Um, I could have written that as like an A major 13 and then played the 9 and the major 7 and the F sharp still, uh, and that would have sounded like this. Which is still cool, it's just, it was a very specific thing of do I want G sharp in there or not. Anyways, that's enough talking about those two chords. Let's move on. Um, same thing happens here. Uh, another thing that I've been doing uh, in measure eight, you see, is um, a chord without a melody. Um, for the longest time, I was just like, I, I realized one day, I was like, why don't I ever do that? Because sometimes chords can transition things, and you don't need the melody to also be going over every chord that happens, or you don't need a chord for every chunk of melody, you know? And I always like, just tried to put two together all the time, and I was like, wait, let me not. Oh God, so measure eight, just that B major for beat, oh God, let me play the right, Jesus, I'm struggling. Pause for a second. <clears throat> all right, we're back. So uh, for measure eight, right, so that B major seven, I mean, I play the voicing up here anyways, but, uh, you know, it, it doesn't have to, it does work nice if I play that A sharp to A in the voicing, um, here because A sharp major seven and then A where the melody is, but it was just something that's like, this is a way to transition. I didn't want to go just A six, nine into F sharp minor because that's very similar. Um, granted the bass notes different and those chords do deserve different recognition, but it was a little bit more similar versus B major seven going to F sharp minor seven. There's more of a change. It's more, more leading to it. Um, and to add four chord, let's talk about that for a second. Um, the way I think of an add four chord is just by playing uh, a sus voicing and then the third on top. I just think it's awesome. I just, I want to like live in that for like a week. I just want to like sip coffee and stare out a window at like a beautiful landscape to this chord forever, honestly. Um, that's an add four chord to me, which is weird because if you think of E add four realistically, it seems like you'd play an E major triad and then add four on top, but that doesn't, I don't want to live there for a week and sip coffee, but here, ah, uh, yes, yes I do. Um, I worked very hard to put in these notes in finale. Um, let me zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. Um, all right, where is it? There we go. So that's too zoomed, I think. 
But if you look, there's these little these little guys up here, right? That E up. It's even if you it's you see it as a different layer because it's the second layer. It's like a it's or you see you see a different layer. You see a different color because it's a different layer. Um, so the whole plan of this, and I'm gonna try my best to play it on this tiny keyboard. Um, but I was thinking, so here's from measure. I'm gonna play these four measures as best I can at 7:45 in the morning having not played piano in months. Ready? <laughs> Me neither. That was pretty good, all things considered. I'm pretty proud of that. Um, I like that, just something... Uh, sorry. It's just super cool and it fits the chord, um, but it didn't happen what what had happened you see what had happened was um we recorded it and then i was like hey we didn't play that part but we can just add it in post and then we just never did um which is fine i'm not super hurt about it i would like to hear it with that at some point in time and i literally forgot until i was like oh i'm gonna break down this song today um but whatever you know such is life uh this bar two at the end uh i have a lot of stuff that has shifting meters and things um this I don't really count because comparatively this is not that crazy um, to some of the other things that I've written and played. But um, that extra two bars is just for the notes to breathe. So when I write and I do anything involving any sort of meter, it's never, it's either there's like a groove that I'm thinking of in that meter. I don't know. I feel like I said groove really weird. Groove <laughs> that I'm thinking of in that meter or the melody um, and just like the song itself, I think needs that breath or that lack of breath to fit it whenever there's any metric thing ever, um, which we'll talk about when we check out pizza box for the next, I don't know if that's next, but one of the later song breakdowns anyways. Um, okay. That's the whole beginning part. Now, after that is Max's solo, which I don't know where it starts. We're just going to skip to the pretty part. This is my favorite part of his whole solo. Um, by the way, he's soloing over all of this. So, so far, we've only played this, and he's soloing over these changes, too. We have yet to go to A1. Woof. Oh. Max is so good. Um, just improvising, just gorgeous melodies. What a sweet dude. Um, I'll link their stuff below, by the way. He is a fantastic musician as the Sam Dando the bass player. Um, okay, so after his solo, we go to A1. One, two, A1. So that was the end of his solo. So notice here we go to a D major 7 at 13. A little bit different than the initial A. Now my favorite part. And then it turns into a drum solo. Let's talk about that. So um, A1, like I said before, it, this is the same melody, right? The, uh, oh, I'm still up an octave, sorry. But now this next part, going to D major 7 at 13 instead of A major 9. So, oh, sorry, wrong chord. So from right on A1. And then still to A6, 9. Right? Now, this comes in one bar early. C, notice this is a seven bar phrase, and then C. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then C starts. If we compare that, our first A is eight bars, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then the bridge, right? It's a really common eight bar phrase. This is just like a thing in Western music. I always forget because it's so like Europe centric, Euro centric, but that's east of where I am. Is that dumb? <laughs> um, so seven bar phrase, but we go to the same melody that we would expect, right? The second time in the melody, boom, sh, b, d, b, d, b, b, boom, sh, b, d, b, d, b, f sharp, boom, b, d, b, d, b, b, and then boom, b, d, b, d, b, f sharp. We go to f sharp, but we go to f sharp over G major. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 
So that progression there, that was just these two R's. Um, I think that was what I had started with for this song. I, this was something that existed before. And I didn't know where to put it. But that's so sweet because if you look at the voices, right, just following my, my right hand. Um, I guess we can just go from here. There are just so many cool voices leading for that. Uh, the bass, G to A, to B flat, to B, to F sharp, to go 7 to 1 again, right? F sharp to G, uh, that half step. It's just like, I played it and I was like, this is the coolest shit ever. And I know I didn't create that progression because it's you know, that's like a thing you hear and you're like, that sounds familiar because it's used a lot. Um, but really liked it. Um, regarding the process, because I know we've talked about it before, um, Max, the pianist, when we first played, he's like, what do you think of going from, so every other time treating this B minor chord as B major, which would sound like this. So, minor, now major. Wait, hang on. Yeah, I, I can't remember what it was, but Max is like, what if we do every other time we do this? Um, and it like, when he played it, it sounded very much like Max is writing, which is cool. But I just like, uh, I don't want to get that way. It felt kind of like from a very specific era, and it felt like it really fit his vibe, which is cool. But I was like, uh, I want to I keep it as as, which is an example of one of those times where it's like, hey, what about adjusting it? And I'm a little bit more like, hey, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> but I'm, I mean, I'm glad he said it all the same. You know, we, we always, there's been plenty of times where that happens, where it's like, yes, that's so much better than the stupid thing I wrote. Or there's times where I'm like, oh, I kind of like the stupid thing I wrote. Um, the end part, let's talk about the last eight bars real quick. So a drum solo goes on for too long, and then... Triplet Q out, which happens. Here it is. So, um, literally just, I, I told Max, I was like, the, the Q will be triplets. And it was like that really potato measure, but the bump, but, uh, is really what gave it away. So the whole time is just this vamp 27 through 30 on repeat. So the sound of that music cue is literally this moment. So the halftime thing for a second. And that's when everyone knew. Sweet. And then just, you know, yeah, you can't just end on a drum solo and then just have like one crash and be like, all right, you gotta you gotta do the whole like um can you see this? I always every time I look this way, by the way, is so I can see that everything looks good on the recording because sometimes I'm tired of doing this and being like, yeah, so this last measure here, and then it's behind me and I gotta like copy paste the music so pardon the lack of eye contact hey listen i'm still here with us i promise i'm attentive uh so we take that progression from 31 uh g major a major six b minor now we start changing it to just be going up moving up in minor chords d flat to e flat then g flat uh then to a flat and then that was our end goal was that E flat or D sharp to get to a major seven sharp 11. So D sharp or E flat was our target goal. The way we got there was all of this is so F sharp, right? goes from our seven of our G major seven to our six of our A major six to our five of our B minor. 
Then we go up to five again. So A flat over D flat minor chord is our five. B flat over E flat minor is five. D flat over G flat minor is five. E flat over A flat minor is five. And then that power of going from five to major seven and making that five a sharp 11. So E flat, this melody note right now is a five, which is not like the strongest melody note. You know, I usually describe five as like the mayo. It's like important, but it's not the most like, oh my God. And then we turn it into like, whew, some sort of homemade, homemade incredible sauce by changing that same melody note, right? Not epic. Woo, the stank, the souse in that, you know, just shifting that from five to sharp 11, but keeping it the same melody note. And then our bass motion goes from A flat, you can't see my hands, A flat up a half step to A while that melody stays pedaled. I just think that's really sweet. Um, so it was just the way that we made this ascending line into the end uh, after the drum solo. And that's the whole tune. That's the whole song breakdown. I know that was a lot, um, but thank you for being here. Um, if you want to check out more stuff, link to below. We're going to keep doing uh, song breakdowns until we're done with the record. And then we're going to do the whole behind the scenes thing, which I really got to start editing because I have like a lot of footage from that. <laughs> Thank you again for being here. Um, there's also a podcast that's been going on lately. So uh, some of the earlier episodes is with members of the trio, and I'm sure they'll be back again super soon. So if you want to hear what their voices sound like and not just them on the instruments, the podcast Drinks with Dylan is out everywhere, and the links are below for that as well. Um, anyways, thanks so much for being here, and I'll see you on the next episode. Peace. Peace.